So for today's work, I have various uh, things that we're going to talk about. Uh, if you've, uh, you should have had, you should have gotten the syllabus. Remember, uh, I asked you to send me an email to get the syllabus. And so today we've got a variety of things to talk about on our calendar here. So um, I want to revisit uh, for a, for a moment. I want to revisit uh, last week's. Um, uh, when we set up our webmaster tools. Now, in class together, we did uh, the Bing webmaster tools, and then I said you should try then on your own to set up the, um, the, the Google webmaster tools, Google Analytics. How many of you managed to do that at home? Okay, a good, a good amount of you. So if you didn't, uh, during the lab time, see me, and we'll try to get that set up. The sooner you set that up, the better, because then you'll be able to track a variety of data, which some of some of which I'll show you today, uh, and what and what the importance of it is. Now, if you didn't set up your Google Analytics or your Google Webmaster Tools, that's okay. Uh, you'll still be able to follow along and get these concepts for when it's all set up. So, what I'm going to do, if you if you did manage to set up uh, Bing Webmaster Tools, go ahead and and log into Bing so that you can get to the to the control panel, the dashboard. So I'm go ahead and log into your Bing control panel. So if you remember the address, the direct address, which is on the handout, uh, bing.com slash toolbox. bing.com slash toolbox and then you'll sign in with that account that you set up last time Alright, so I've logged in to my account. You should log into your account if you've got it set up. And then uh, whatever uh, site that you have, <clears throat> uh, you, you might be getting some data. Uh, last time we were here, if you set this up the first time, there's not much data to track because it was brand new. So how many of you now see some values here that you did not see before? Good. So again, this will keep track of the data once you start once you set it up. You can't go back in time and tell you how your stats were a month ago if you didn't set it up a month ago. So um, you can go ahead and click on your site uh, to to view the details of it. And so when you've logged in, you can. Uh, we saw these columns previously. As a quick reminder, uh, the important ones that I would look at are um, clicks from search and crawl errors. Well, an error obviously is not a good thing. So if you've got an error, you can. Uh, we can see a screen in here that'll tell us what's the error. Why? Why am I getting this error? Most likely, what's happening is that there's a there's a page that was deleted, um, or renamed, or or some missing page. Mm -hmm. On another screen, we'll see exactly what the error is. That's one of the ones I would pay attention to: crawl errors. Uh, and then the other one is clicks from search. This is that someone searches for a keyword. Uh, phrase something and then your page shows up on the results of Bing and then someone clicks on it so I want 
obviously clicks from search to be positive numbers increasing all the time and crawl errors to be um, to be uh, crawl error numbers to be low because I don't want any problems but sometimes it doesn't happen like that and we can figure out what's going on um, in this screen so let's see here in this um, in this screen we can look at on the left side we've got a variety of different screens that we can look at <clears throat> at the moment we can go over to reports and data if you click on it reports and data and you'll get this chart that goes on for the past time period, in my case 30 days, and you can activate these different uh, line charts. Clicks from search, crawl errors. So over that time period, it's already gone everywhere. You can bring it back here. It's, it's gone everywhere. You can bring it back here. And so uh, you can just uh, get a, a, a quick glance of uh, your activity crawl errors, it's all relative, so you see a really big spike like that, it might be scary, but then you roll your mouse over something and then it'll tell you exactly, well that was a uh, crawl error, crawl errors in my case was 27 and then clicks from search was, was 7. Now to get back to this screen, what you can do is click on reports and data. And then down here, it'll tell you uh, more information. Of course, page traffic, your top pages from organic search. Remember, there's organic search, organic results, and there's paid search, page, paid results. Uh, so this is going to tell you how well you're doing without pay, without doing these pay-per-click campaigns. What are people searching for and the, what are results you're getting? So uh, here, my top... Uh, item clicks from search 156 clicks appeared in search 1044 times click through rate 14.94 you might hear that term in the world of SEO CTR click through rate CTR which is just a percentage of you've appeared in search a number of times and you've been clicked from appearing on those searches click through rate so in my case this says 15% Obviously, I want that to be 100%, 90%, 80%, a really high percentage. But there's a variety of reasons why it might not be that high. And also, it's uh, any percentage above zero is going to be good, right? That means that you are getting clicks from appearing on search. Other values that we can look at, average search click position, average search appearance position. Um, where, do, where do you appear on search? by average when someone searches this one says um, 3.5 so between spot 3 and 4 this page often appears on a search uh, when people actually click on it it often appears on result 1 or 2 closer to 1 um, in the past time period another item that was clicked was this uh, was this deeper page what is Huitla Coche uh, so the site has a blog, and uh, they write about, or we write about a variety of um, topics uh, to educate people about the food. So wheat la coche. How many of you ever heard of wheat la coche? Zero. Okay, read that blog, and then you'll know what it is. It's basically a. Um, they call it uh, one term for for it is the Mexican corn truffle, which is uh, corn that has um, developed. Uh, an interesting fungus that actually turns it blue and tasty. So you uh, sa saute that up with some butter and now you've got huitla coche, traditional Mexican um, uh, meal made out of uh, corn. Down here the question was asked previously, well we've talked about um, the pay-per-click campaigns uh, buying keywords so that when someone searches them uh, hopefully we get found and the price will it was asked well, what's the price for that this screen tells you that so if you decide to put uh, 
$10 this month, I want to get some traffic um, via these terms, this is how much it costs. So um, I think it's person it's pretty worthless to choose the keyword to buy the keyword of your own name because if you're if someone is searching the name of your company, your company will probably be number one and you're gonna waste money by buying your own name to get found on. Because remember what happens, you put a pool of ten dollars, let's say, and every time someone clicks on it, you get subtracted from that amount. How much? In this case, a kiosk Coco would cost five cents per click. Okay, so I'm paying to be to have my name appear up on top. That's good, but I'm the what I'm trying to pay for is when people search my name. Quick reminder, everyone, let's turn off our cell phones, please. Question. So is that the same for Google too? Put money in my bank account. Yeah, very similar. Exactly. Google uh, goes along those same lines, and we can see on Google how much their costs are as well. So um, five cents per click, and uh, I don't really need to ha to to pay for my own name. If someone knows my name, they're going to type the name, and without me having to pay for it, my name will appear up there. We saw that when we did that search on the first day. I said, let's search for the name of your company, and it appeared on top because it's the name of your company. It's that unique. Okay, other name, other things it suggests here, but I can go in and see every suggestion or every keyword right there. But here it's saying maybe Texcoco. Okay, that's a little bit more generic. That might be a possibility to purchase that name uh, or that keyword. And here it's saying also five cents. And notice it says either in the main line or the sidebar. Well, the sidebar is the edge of the search engine results page, right? The sidebar. And the main line is right at the top in the center. Sometimes main line is more expensive than sidebar. In this, um, in this case, they're the same price. Now, average cost per click and average bid. Um, depending on the keyword, Realtors in San Diego. This might be uh, a pretty expensive keyword uh, to pay for because there might be a bunch of other realtors in San Diego. So it talks about a bid and it's sort of like eBay, like an actual auction where you're trying to say, I'm going to pay uh, 10 cents per click to use this keyword. Someone else, your competitor pays 11 cents and they win the bid. So they've got the keyword. Um, but it's showing, uh, it's trying to entice you to pay for the keyword by showing you your statistics. Here it's showing your click-through rate. If you use this keyword, it might give you more clicks. It appears at this point in the search results. My gay plant, five cents, nine cents. Look at that, people are bidding. It's gonna cost you, every time someone clicks on it, five cents. But it's worth nine cents to be able to reserve that keyword because other people might want it. Yes? So if nothing shows up in the keyword search because it just started the site, um, is there a way to find out if you wanted the keyword on there? Yeah, there's another, uh, there's another screen in here somewhere where we'll be able to sort of research this without having the data yet. So if we have ideas of what our keywords might be, we can plug them in and say, and get some charts about how is it performing and what does it cost. So this uh, screen here, reports and data, is an overview because then all of these, all of these sections have deeper sections below it here. But just to continue, what else I'm seeing? Uh, SEO reports discover which areas of your site may need work to comply with SEO best practices. So again, this is going to tell you from, straight from the horse's mouth what are the best tactics, what are you, what are you missing, and, and so forth. So here, in this particular case, it's saying these items might need to be worked on. If I don't understand what they mean, you can click on them and it will give you more, more information. Specifically what pages it might not be set up properly on. It's up to you then to implement them, which might be a little technical for depending on the issue. The image does not have an alt attribute defined. And then a severity rating, how many uh, times it it sees that error and, and the number of pages. 
Now, the funny thing is that it says SEO suggestions, but here then it calls it an error. So it's kind of like, which is it? Uh, it? It is a suggestion. If you follow these, your SEO results will be better. So to call it an error might be a little alarmist, but coupled with severity, low, medium, high. If it's got high severity and you've got a lot of those errors, you might want to take care of that as soon as possible. The description is missing in the head section of the page. So I'll explain what that means a little bit later. But on this I can get a, an overview about what some SEO problems I'm having. Uh, since Bing and the search engines, Google, are looking at your site um, once you've made yourself known to them, they will analyze your site. And if there are any problems, it'll tell you here. So apparently here, um, no server errors, that's good. Pages moved permanently, okay, that's fine, robots exclusion. But what I would worry about are the 400 errors. You probably heard of the 404 error. That means a page is missing. What pages are missing? You can click right here, and it'll tell you uh, specifically what the problem is. So I'm going to check that out. So let's see. These problems right here are showing that the this page here has a 404. It seems to be missing. This is missing too. So these are old pages that, that need to be uh, cleaned up within the Bing um, webmaster tool. Yeah, that page has been removed, that thing is old. So some of these errors uh, are obviously more severe than others. If you know you removed something, eventually this will f sort of fix itself, but I'll show you where we can go to kind of fix it for us. But if it's a severe error, like your about page is missing, I'm glad I looked here to see there's something wrong with my about page. Question? On the dashboard it says I have two, but then when I'm where you are right now, there's nothing. Yeah, I see that too sometimes, and I'm not sure what to say about that. It might be that uh, your uh, your time range, for some reason, maybe it's showing you 60 days of errors, but this screen only is showing us 30 days. So maybe uh, on the previous screen here, change the date to more days. It might be a bug. I'm not exactly sure, but I see that myself as well, and I'm not sure what to say about that. This one says 14 error requests. And right here, that is not 14. So myself, I'm not seeing 14. So I'm not exactly sure what, why it's not quite accurate. Could it be that some of them were done after the others were done before? You mean that it found that it that it marked the error 10 times? 10 times. Could be. Um, there might be a better answer somewhere in their help file why that is, but that's a good uh, that's a good assumption. They might only show you, you know, these might add up to 14 errors, but this one happened twice, and this one happened seven times, perhaps. Yes? No, and on another screen over here, we've got, uh, I need to find it somewhere, there's a screen that says, error has been fixed, so we can tell Bing, the error has been fixed. It's, it's gone. Uh, it's, not a, it's not a fatal error that it's like our about page is missing. So that's going to happen. Now, once you remove pages because they're old, like this one, haven't gotten around to removing it from the Bing index yet, there's a screen in here where we can tell it, <clears throat> that error has been fixed. All right, so um, <clears throat> we're going to look at these other screens within this section, page traffic. So every everything that I see under reports and data, this is the overview. And then I can go into detail, and these are the detailed pages. We were just looking at crawl information. If I go back to here, to page traffic, here it'll show me more detail about every page that Bing knows and what... Uh, what it can tell me. How many clicks from search, the CTR, click-through rate. You can organize these in column by in order. So I'm going to say, show me my CTR. Click there. There we go. So let's click 
click through rate 7, just about 8% uh, the menu page. Part of the reason why I might want to look at the data this way is to figure out, is this page the most optimized that it could be? Is it written well? Um, are there no missing pictures on it? Are the, the links from that page to another page intact? Are there no broken links out of that page? I've got an export button where you can download all of this data uh, as an Excel document, as a spreadsheet. So I can download it and look at it more in, in depth, make notes on it and such. Yes? So if my Google report says that a thousand people went to the website in 30 days, mm -hmm. and Bing says 500 people went to the website in 30 days, mm -hmm. they're not bundled, right? It, it's, it's separate. It's their, each search engine is going to show you their results. So those thousand from Google are just from Google, and 500 from Bing are just from Bing. Uh, so in total, you know, you can, you can't really add them. It's sort of like apples and oranges. They're different types of fruit, but they're both fruit. So this is data that I'm getting from Bing that has some relevance, but this is not the same data I'm getting from Google. It's just different. And then I noticed that Google gives me a Yelp and a Facebook report, um, but Yelp sends me their own report. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same it's not thing. Bundled, right? It's not same thing. Each each company Yelp also is going to give you its own report of data because people, uh, there's a demographic of people that just go directly to Yelp and search there, especially if you're a, a restaurant or, or some sort of business. So whatever data you're getting from Yelp might not necessarily correlate very much with the search engine results. People go directly to Yelp. Yes? Hi, um, I have some blue arrows um, on, and that go kind of to the right. What does that mean? That one's basically saying it's steady. It hasn't really changed. Red, it means you lost something. Uh, green is you gain something. Blue is just steady. It's the same as, as it was in the last time period. But you, what you want is like that green arrow. Meaning as much as possible, you want, you want green uh, arrows. Uh, and notice here I see a lot of red. But uh, it also depends on your time period. I would if you increase that from 30 days to 60 days or 90 days. The longer the time period, the better. So on, on the longer time period, if you've got a lot of red, that might be something to deal with. But on just 30 days, it might not be too problematic. So on the left side, we can look at Index Explorer. This one's a little more technical, but this is going to analyze your, your site page by page and just show, sort of show you what does it find per page. Mine is not loading up, but um, if it loads up, you should be able to see a variety of bits of data. Uh, if you have any errors or malware, and all of that, well, this might not work at the moment, but maybe because we're all connected at once. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you get home, check out your Index Explorer. It's going to be able to let you to select every page and look at each page in detail of what it knows about your site, your page. Search keywords. This is the screen where you, would, where you could go uh, to see. This is what Keywords Bing is finding about your site. Um, uh, once you've uh, made yourself known to, to Bing. So you can see every, every keyword here and go into, um, for example, which are the ones that appear that have the higher click-through rate. Let's see. All right, so in this case, 9% click-through rate, lamb barbacoa. Um, 
So if I want to get past my competitors, this uh, restaurant actually has uh, a, a couple of direct competitors in San Diego, two or three maybe, that, that, that also sell uh, traditional lamb barbecue uh, throughout San Diego. So let me see what the price is for that. Five cents. So maybe the competitors are not tapping into um, doing pay-per-click. So that's still an affordable, if I wanted to tap into that, that's still an affordable keyword to, to go for. Five cents per click. And, um, do, and setting up this process, pretty straightforward. If you're interested, you could click buy now and go through the process. But in this class, like I say, we're not going to be buying. We're not going to be uh, running paid campaigns. What if all of yours are zero? Mine are zero. On the columns. On the click through rate. On the click through rate. That's not good. Yeah, same here. Uh, click on that column, and it, you might be looking at the because it organizes it. But click on it one more time, and it might show you the other because it's show, right here showing you the, the end of the list. Oh, click it again and show you the top I of the see. list. So these that are zero, I might not want to. to so I want the this. ones that are green. And, mm -hmm. Okay. Or even blue, but not set to zero. These that have this right here, 50% blue, that means it hasn't changed from the previous month. And if people see it, 50 50 chance that they'll click on it. So, does anyone see any values here that are more than a dollar? Okay, so again, you can export this. It'll give you all the data. You can download it for yourself and work with it. The SEO reports screen. Uh, this will show you if you've got a bunch of SEO errors, where they are, what to do with them. I'm going to skip these couple for a moment. Inbound and crawl info. We already looked at crawl info. Uh, if I go to malware, hopefully you don't get anything on the malware screen. That's that uh, Bing uh, looked at your site and it recognizes there's some sort of virus on your site or malware or some sort of some sort of bad thing on your site. And if it finds it, it'll tell you what it is and hopefully help you how to fix it. So this is a good Are screen to look at. Are going back to the SEO reports, or are you saying it's not? Oh no, we were just looking at SEO reports. Oh, what does it mean H1? Uh, there are multiple H1 tabs. Well, like I said earlier, you can click on those and it'll give you a, a, an explanation what it is. And then during the lab time, depending on what people have, we can look at your, your issues. So I don't have anything on malware. That's good. Now here's one that we're going to look at that uh, is pretty important. Uh, inbound links. And again, if your site is pretty new. You might not have anything here yet, but inbound links is one of the most important screens you're going to want to look at on your Bing Webmaster Tools and when we get to Google that screen as well. This is a list of all of the pages that link all of the websites that links to that link to your website. So any other website that links to your website is listed here. So this little chart just kind of shows you in general uh, and then right here, specifically, okay, my home page, the main page of the site, has 302 links pointing to that page. This one about uh, the history of barbacoa has 26. This one about the amazing maguey plant, 19, and it goes on. So that's cool. I'm getting a lot of links to my site. What are those links? If you actually click a number in that co column there, it pops up to tell you. In this case, it's like a uh, very famous uh, food um, institution. They, they rate restaurants. Um, they've been around for a few decades. And here they've got 
a link from their website to our website, specifically a, an article called The Best Tacos in 15 U.S. Cities. So a big name in the world of, uh, of restaurants has linked to this restaurant, this client of mine. It's big news. Um, I'll explain this screen a little bit more, and then I'll explain what's the point and who cares. But here is where I can see, and I can click for it to take me to the actual page. So I can see, okay, this is uh, the best tacos in 15 U.S. cities, and then my client is listed there. The other one, uh, this is a new one, love and loathing in love and loathing la.com. I haven't seen it, so hopefully I can show it in class. If not, cover your eyes. <laughs> 15 things to do in LA this week. That's good. Is five things. Where's page two? Oh, wait, there's more. Hmm, that's weird. Uh, so the this report here is is saying. Okay, wait a minute. Um, Sometimes it can specifically tell you, okay, this one for Zagad was saying specifically what, uh, what page within the site linked to our page. This one for some reason was just saying the, the top level, the, the address. So there might be a blog post somewhere or maybe an ad or I don't know, for some reason. There's a top down there. Yeah, but it's going to specifically... If, it, if this should be that if if there's a link here, there is a link to the website, not just because the word taco. There is going to be somewhere, but uh, I'll figure that out later. It's a uh, it scrolls pretty far, so maybe somewhere there's a there's a blog post about the the restaurants. But anyway, the um, the uh, this screen. The point of the screen is that it's going to show you what pages link to your link to your to your site, and though and and why we would want to know this uh, feeds into a tactic that you need to learn about that you need to know about and employ to improve your SEO. Uh, modern SEO is that we've got links to our website. We'll talk about how to get links a little later. But we've got links to our website. That's good. So if a good website linked to my website, that's good SEO for me. And if a good website links to my website, I want other people to know about that. So the technique is, once you, once you find out what uh, pages are linking to your website, you want to, uh, you want to hype that. You want to let other people know about that via social media. You want to go on Facebook or Twitter or Pinterest or whatever social media you have and link to the link that's linking to you. So you have this feedback loop uh, where some link, which is positive, this is very positive, is linking to my website. And so I'm going to then, on our Twitter, link to that so that my followers then can see that and go to that link and then that goes back to our link. And this creates this feedback loop of good SEO. So, if I have any if I have any results, if you have any results on that on that page, you want to click those links, see what the page is. Is it positive? Because there might be a link, but it might not be positive. And I'll talk about what to do with negative ones soon. But if it's a positive link, okay, I've seen this one before. We're on number, we're, we're slide number 12 over here somewhere. 
These are the best 15 tacos in the U.S., according to Zagat. Um, oops, okay. there, number 12, right there. So it's a positive, um, it's a positive article. And notice right here, share. Share on Google+, share on Facebook, share on Twitter, etc. Email to a friend, share it or follow, put it on Instagram, whatever. So the point is, identify these positive links and then go to your Twitter and tweet a link to that, not to yourself, to that link. Because in a, in a sense, what you're doing is you are endorsing an endorsement. And remember, I've said uh, three pillars of SEO. Uh, longevity, authority, content. You can't do much about longevity. Your site's either f around five years or not. But you can do something about authority and content. Authority is how many links, how many positive links do I have to my website? I went here, and here's, here's at least one of them. Content. So once again, uh, I hate to say it again. Someone, please turn off your phone. I keep hearing a little beeping over here on this side of the room somewhere. It's a little distracting. If you haven't turned off your cell phone, please do it. So um, if you have good content, that also helps your SEO. This is good content. I didn't create it myself, but it's okay to... Um, to post other people's content. A good rule uh, that you could go by is the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 your own original content and 20% other people's content. This is other people's content. I'm going to tweet this on my Twitter account so that people know about it. And in turn, that's going to help my SEO because this big name in the business is linking to my website. Yes. Now, does it matter how many Twitter followers you have? Um, yes. So the more you have, the better. But uh, even if you have few uh, followers, it's still a positive thing to do. So if you've got 10 followers, that's still better than having zero. Not as good as having 100 or 1,000. But you still want to uh, tweet, even if you don't have a huge follower account. Their page, like it's in a comment section on a blog, for example. There's different levels of of link backs. That one is one of the lower levels. And not that it's negative, but a much higher uh, type of link that I want is this unsolicited type of link that, out of the goodness of their heart, they decided to write something and link to our site. That's the best one that we can possibly get. If you go. If I go here, and I'm sure they've got a comment section, yeah, right here. If I go in there as the owner of the business and write something like, thank you so much, um, you know, we've got happy hour every Wednesday, and then a link back to our site. That's good, that's fine, but that's not as good of a, of a, of a link back to my site as the unsolicited link. And even if I go there, like, let's say, not as the business, but as myself, as my personal account, that has some value, but not as much as the original link from the from the article. Question. Is there any way to solicit inbound links in a non sort of <laughs> demanding way? <laughs> there is, and we're going to talk about um, some tactics that we can do. Uh, but uh, just basically, in short, what I could in short, what I could say is just uh, you know ask nicely, be honest, but also your content is what's going to entice people to link back to you. So if you've got good content, that helps build your authority so that when you ask, someone could link back to you. But we'll talk more about some more tactics that we can do. Okay. Question? Um, how does it know that the links are there? Is because the search engine is looking at the site and it notices that there's a link in there with your site address and then it yeah. wants to look at it? Pretty much. Because uh, the search engines are going to all the pages, they saw this particular page and they saw that's an active link they looked at the code and they see that's a link and then they follow it and it goes back to our site and that's why it counts it on this screen here because it is an active link back to our site uh, right here where where it says you know just the name of the restaurant without a link it doesn't really pay attention to that it pays attention to some link 
that goes back to our site. And it doesn't even have to have our name. This could have said, these tacos in, in San Diego are amazing. And that word, that phrase was linked back to our site. That's fine too. It doesn't need to say the name of the restaurant and a link back to our site. It could say, these tacos in San Diego are amazing. And if that's got a link to our back to our website, that's great. So we'll see something similar to this in um, in Google when we when when we get to it in a moment. But this is one of these screens that I'm saying it's very important to to pay attention to. And I I hope they update it on a future version because it's a little cumbersome to to look at it because then you have to close the window and then go to the next page and then look at it there. Maybe there there'll be an easier way to work with it on a later version. But what you can always do you've got this export. I forget which one, which is which. Let me try it because I always forget. There's export all and export. I'm going to click export all, and it's going to download all of the data as an Excel file. Let me just look at what it gives me. Because one of them gives you something very useful, and the other one not so useful. I don't know exactly why they have it. But this one seems to be the useful one. The other one, export. Yeah, that's the not useful one. Okay, don't do the one that says export. That one only gives you the the page and the number of links. I don't care about that. I want to know the links. So the one you want to download is the one that says export all. That gives me a spreadsheet that looks like this. So it gives me a spreadsheet that looks like this, where it tells you what's the page that was linked to, what's the page it's coming from, and the anchor text, which is basically what was the text on that page that linked to our page. And in this case, most of the anchor text is the name of the restaurant, Agios Dix Local. A couple of places, it's the address, that's fine. Over here, it's one about tortilla soup, and what else? Visit Akiestex Coco. So that's the anchor text. That's what's highlighted as a link on the other person's page and to what page is it linked to. So let's say I've identified a, a link here, synergy, synergycashcard.com, etc. etc. Let's say, well, here's one, best ice cream in San Diego. Let's say I wanted to uh, to put that out there. So I'll do a live demonstration here. Let me actually just check out the link if it is good. Um, new press, yeah, that'll work. Yeah. It is press, it is press, yeah. definitely. You could, uh, if you've got a separate page for press, that's fine uh, on your site, but I would recommend uh, to also put it on your social media. All right, so here, this particular post from Zagat is saying, Nieder Frank's ice cream. Is a, is a great ice cream shop in National City, uh, and it's actually served in our restaurant, Texcoco. So that's a good, that's good advertising for Texcoco because it links back to our site. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to log into our company's Twitter. And I'm going to compose a tweet. See if I've got a photo of it, because also, uh, so I'll, I'll give you a little preview here about um, writing a good tweet. I'm going to try to find an enticing picture of this ice cream. I'm sure we've got one. Uh, I'm going to post the link, and also, let's see, doesn't Twitter have a better way to see my pictures? Um, 
I'm gonna post a, uh, a I'm gonna post that link, that positive link and a picture. So the moral of the story is have this planned. Uh, but I'm sure we've got a picture of the ice cream. August 2012. Okay. So I want this picture. All right. So I'm going to tweet that picture plus the link that uh, from Zagat to our followers so would this be a good opportunity to use some uh, very good hashtags to attract some attention yeah if there's something relevant something, a relevant hashtag, definitely. So I'm going to say, um, summer isn't over. Why not enjoy a tasty ice cream. So I'm going to say, as I get did, Yeah, uh, I'm blanking on some hashtags, but I'll just write tasty. Tasty Tuesday. It's not Tuesday, so tomorrow. <coughs> All right, so uh, something like that. I have the link to that positive. Uh, I, I, I put the, the, the link to that positive article. Uh, I also mentioned Zagat. Uh, I might get a retweet, and they've got several thousand followers. Uh, something enticing, a picture, tweet it, and that'll go out to our followers. And so, um, this process, as I said, is an important process for you to know and to execute, but it is time consuming. It does take this effort. It's that I need to go to my inbound link screen find some of these links that are positive, then go to my social media, write something enticing, and then that eventually creates this, this loop of positive SEO. It's not automatic, it takes effort. But it's happened several times where we tweet something, it's got a nice picture, it's got a link, and then someone else retweets it. There's a, there's a football player, a soccer player that uh, that has 1.2 million followers and he tweeted something that we tweeted so you can imagine what sort of uh, traction that got. It got a lot of uh, activity because someone um, saw our picture, someone famous, they had followers so it's not maybe that we have a lot of followers but maybe enough of the followers that we have have followers that then the followers of followers can get us attention. And the whole and the thing about uh, social media is its own huge topic, which is another class I teach, which I'll talk about later today. Yes? Um, maybe this is a little too complex, but in terms of the Bing and Google, um, the difference between the description that appears when you do a search about the same company, you search on Bing and then you search on Google and the description is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Is it grabbing like a different piece of the website or how do you control that? It should be grabbing the same text. I'm not exactly sure why it would be grabbing different text. Maybe it hasn't been updated recently. Um, the if it's a website has like a rotating banner on the top, and I think it's grabbing like a different piece of that banner. 
Well, if you've got your, your meta description set up, you should be grabbing that, not what's on the page. So check if you've got meta descriptions. How do you set that up in Bing? That'll, that's a little off topic at the moment. Okay. But uh, we'll be seeing about meta descriptions uh, on, your, on your pages. Uh, if you've got WordPress, it's, that's one of the easiest ways to set it up via WordPress. Okay. All right, so any questions on, on this, uh, on the inbound links on Bing and why it's useful to know this? All right, so uh, let's take a short break. When we come back, we'll look at we'll look at the same sort of thing over on Google, and then we'll talk about okay, we're we're looking at positive links. What about if there's negative links pointing to our site? How do we deal with that? So we'll be back at uh, 140, and then we'll we'll go on.